Okay, there are five Japanese yakata. These kata are based on the Okinawan Chanan kata, Janan in Korean, Korean and the Kushin Ku kata, and were developed around 1905 by Yasutuni Atosha, the great Okinawan master for use in Okinawan secondary education systems. Now, many, many people have this uh, incorrect. There's a form called J A N O N, Janan, or Chanan in Okinawa. And that is, it's never done anymore, nobody knows it hardly. But that is the base of this form, of Kian forms. And they were done by Anku Toshi, if you remember correctly, as my teachers, teachers, teacher, teacher. I'm a student of Jelly Park, a student of Deng Yun, a student of Kaka Toyama, a student of Anku Toso. Anku Toso also was the teacher of Kodokoshi Genshin, the founder of the Shotokan. So this form has found their way into the Shotokan. The other names for the Hian Kadas are Pinan, which is an Okinawan name, Tianan, which is a Korean name. The Tianan An and the Pinan are more commonly used than the Hian, and Pinan is really the original, original name of the forms. When these kata were later introduced into Japan, they were renamed Kian. As with almost all kata adopted by Japan, they were given a Japanese name and meaning, and consequently now allude to the peaceful Kian era of Japanese history, which is approximately the year uh, 1100, something like that. The order of the forms was also changed, and the numbers 1 and 2 in the series are on places. Techniques were changed or reordered. One noticeable change was done by the founder of the Korean Somokan, Rope Young Jet. Considered it more beneficial to practice Hian one using the back stance and middle outside hand in the second half of the new Tian An form, one in place of the much used outside low section down block. Now we use it that way because I took my uh, third and fourth degree under him, and uh, fundamentally I'm uh, still part of that system. And the uh, Soma one means Korean Shotokan. His only teacher was Kun Kushi. Okay, the Hian forms are quite short and require a minimum four stage for performance. Because they were intended for practice by groups of students within a confined area. The calm philosophy of the form originates with the concept of teaching non aggressive self defense, together with the physical condition, was important and necessary for the development of the Okinawan people. These forms can be performed in either the low or high form method. The low form method stresses strong muscular actions, strong stances, powerful movement, and explosive power in blocks and strikes. We've done that, and that's what you do in your dojo. But we can say again that mind numbing repetitions of that necessity for learning basic techniques does somewhat mar your ability to learn the higher forms. So when you go to the higher forms, you must escape the mind numbing repetition and start thinking. See? The high form method utilizes agility, speed, and quickness techniques to the velocity. Um, the techniques which bring the velocity necessary to the application of great force and power. All performances of the Kian Kata begin and end with a defensive posture, implying the state of continued watchful readiness, which is the primary concept of Zanshin, and thus Buddha. Many people think, and they state it openly, that it becomes a, uh, starts with defense and ends with defense. It is not. Anybody who studies the Kenka techniques of these know it begins with attack, and so ends. But it, in the sense it's a continual watchfulness for the technique, it can be said that you're actually looking before you strike. A lot of the Korean forms actually strike before they look. One very good case of that is if I turn here, and I look, or I turn this one, and put my hand up. As in the Japanese system, one says I'm looking before I hit, and this is I'm hitting before I look. And so we know from our study that, that when uh, certain of our people say that it ends with starts and ends and begins with starts and begins with a defense, we know that's incorrect. We know it depends upon the point of view and the level of the practice. Obviously, the forms at times that you are moving and other times that you are standing motionless. It is not apparent to the uninformed observer that the standing times are really both an engulfing next action and are as such of vital importance. That's why when you're standing, even when you're standing, you have to manifest the Zanshin, the, the mental state of continuing action. That mental state is vital to what we would call Budo, and in uh, Korean, of course, is called Budo. The standing part of the form 
should take about 65% of the time, and the movement the remaining 35. Most of the forms last about a minute, and it is an error to do them in any but the intended speed. Now, the term intended is used because most of the forms require about a minute of performance. But at times, they may be practiced as quickly as possible. Sometimes the forms are brought down to as little as 10 seconds. And we'll see that later when we do the uh, more advanced cut. Nervous speed arising from the discomfort of standing still is never acceptable. You should never stand still and be nervous. But I think if we were to have you stand in a front stance, and he and I were going to get a couple of talks, we all would come back and you'd be shaking, wouldn't you? But not because you're nervous. Correct? Okay. okay, for the beginner, the forms develop the basic blocks, strikes, and stances found in karate, together with the coordination of breathing and movement. The movement of the center of the body, the lower abdomen, the heart, as it's called in Japanese, is also of great importance and is stressed accordingly. Now, the hara, of course, is the middle of the tandem, and the tandem and the hara being exactly the same thing. And we, since we're neither uh, Japanese nor Chinese nor Korean, we sort of intermingle the words. The idea is to have you know what they mean. Uh, the beginner learns to bend the knees, to sit low in the stances, and to concentrate attention on the line of the action. The student also learns to set action in better than patience. Action is always embedded in patience, isn't it? Even in pro football, you know, you don't run until you're ready. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to. We're not talking about acting you now. <laughs> the study of the Hian Kadas is also a good entry into the study of Hokai and the interpretation of forms. At first, the high defense are just that, and the kicks and punches arrive in an understandable and useful order. For the advanced student, the interpretation of the movements change, and an introduction to the possibilities of kinka techniques is quite illuminating and exciting. It is a sad fact that few karate masters are conversant with these kinka applications, and so the hyan forms are often dismissed out of hand. The hyan forms appear deceptively simple, but, the actual, uh, actual, but in actuality embody many of the most necessary and truly secret deadly fighting techniques. For the kata competitor, the forms lack too much to be studied for performance. Perhaps the fourth form might be presentable, but if the necessary time were spent to ready the form, it would be better spent on the uh, crucial coup the major form it came from. As a matter of fact, it can actually be said that if you spend too much time on the low form, then uh, the high form would be corrupt. If you're doing high forms and want to encapsulate little sections of it, then do the low forms. That won't hurt you. But do too much low forms beyond a certain point is wrong. So, what is too much? After you've done the form 300 times, that's too much. You should move on. Knowing a great number of forms is a no benefit. No. No much work. That's like knowing a whole lot of words. They give you a little understanding, but it's messed up. Okay. In practicing the forms, care should be taken that the stances are set properly with a deep gripping the floor. Now, we have a gripping exercise for that, don't we? So we walk with our toes. And that isn't just uh, so that you can strengthen your feet. That's to teach you to grip the floor. And I notice many of you don't grip the floor. I'm not satisfied with that. When I say many of you, I don't mean necessarily you, I mean the, uh, of the general class. And uh, that the back stances are weighted to the rear and the front stances are all the way forward. The relationship with the back, the best back stance to the longest allowable front stance must be correct because this will allow you to return to your starting point a big must for these cars. Now, if you really want to get somebody that thinks they know how to do cod, ask them to express the relationship between their best back stance and the longest allowable front stance. And they can't do it. And that's the trouble with learning too many forms. You cannot come to an understanding of walking, very basic walking and stepping. And so everything by nature becomes clumsy, even if you do it in a very nice way. There are very, uh, what do we call, agile, clumsy people. Believe it or not. Okay, in all the actions, you should move from the far back position to the far front by throwing the heart, turning the waist, and giving the hips. 
All this with the hard tip of body up and down. Use the big muscles first and then conclude with a powerful snap. Try to move the heart the greatest distance possible and do not let the knees wiggle to soak in any body shape. Well, you see that all the time in our car. We're going to try to uh, do this today and show you how to do this without wiggling. To completely explore the possibilities of the kata, reveal any weaknesses, and gain a thorough knowledge of the action, you should utilize the four conceptual kata training methods. Perform each method at least three times. One, perform the kata with a slow, powerful, smooth, and sticky action, short of pressure legato. Keep a high tension all the time in the action. Do not let go until the form is done. You can actually quiver with the action if your effort is strong enough. The practice is the power of the form. Two, then separate each individual action of the form and perform it with the hardest, fastest action of which you are capable. A sort of full power staccato. This practice is to balance the movement of the form. Then group all the actions and walk through them in a fast and relaxed manner. Boost easy. Establish the correct rhythm here. Then do the form with a proper form and tempo. This is your final product. Now then, it's mandatory that you clearly establish and understand the following. The ten most grievous errors in the performance of the form. The ten most look for good points in the form. Whenever you perform the kata with confident seniors observing, you should hold it and ascertain what errors they think you committed. And if you have an agreement in your observations, practice hard to remove that particular noticed error. 